What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. All right. And can you do me a huge favor here? All right. We're going to get into some big time stadia stuff that really got me wanting to hit the airwaves and do this discussion with you guys today. But before we get too deep into that one, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells for notification, please, so you know when I'm dropping these stadia doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask, all right? Now, let's get into this inaugural episode of the Stadia Dosage, the very first episode. We're here again. We're going to talk everything related to Stadia. We're going to be doing streaming, podcasts, everything, you know what I'm saying, through this platform, and I want to talk about the latest news and uh gaming subject matters in regards to stadium all right so what do i want to talk about today what got me worked up in the intro here um here's the thing a lot of people keep comparing stadia to native hardware right and without and they do so without having all the proper variables in play right so what do i mean by that well let's talk about it now for those of you that are familiar with all my other content here's how i like to do things i like to break break things up into three parts um, I like to do the checkup, right? Then I like to do the analysis of the situation. And then finally, what I like to do is I like to give you the prescription as we get down to the nitty gritty, okay? So let's get into it, okay? So first, the checkup. So as we all should be aware, Stadia's, uh, Stadia, which is Google's cloud-based gaming platform, it continues to get negative press thrown its way, all right? And it's being done so in regards to the fidelity that it has versus dedicated hardware. Now, admittingly, it may not be able to topple high-end consoles across the board just yet, and particularly the Xbox One X and maybe even some cases the PlayStation 4 Pro. However, it's still early. This is early access, and I believe that um, Google has even labeled it properly this way finally, right? That said, many variables are not being considered due to the difference of this platform that should be taken into consideration when you're rating games and their performance. I, I just don't get it, but We'll get into that later. So now on to the analysis. So in, in, in order to examine why this is happening and what needs to be done in lieu of this, I wanna talk a few things. First, I wanna talk how dedicated hardware is being rated and it's being rated that way properly. And then I wanna compare it to how Stadia is being rated and properly. And then I wanna talk about the problem and how it can be resolved. So on to the prescription. So let's talk about that. How is dedicated hardware being rated? Well. Normally when people want to talk about these new games and they're looking looking at them through the prism of the best, you know, uh, the, the, the snazziest um, hardware dedicated devices, you know what I'm saying? They're getting the best monitors, you know what I mean? They're checking the hardware to make sure there's no technical issues, everything is running right, nothing's getting the red ring of death right, you know what I'm saying? And then they make sure that within that hardware, the optimal settings are being checked, all right? Here's the problem though. When it comes to Google Stadia, that's not happening. You know what I mean? Google Stadia's performance when it comes to particular games is being rated primarily on the, versat the versatile but least optimized scenarios. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'll break that down on what I'm talking about there in a little bit. You know what I mean? They also don't ensure that the best networking gear is being utilized. And lastly, network stability is not being thoroughly tested when they're doing these, these visual checks and stuff like that, right? So why is all that a big deal? Why is those different variables important for people to look at opposed to doing it the hardware way? Well, let me just break it down like this. As far as visuals are concerned, if you're making sure that you know, you get your, your, your snazziest OLED to, for the 4K or you're making sure that, you know, the, the input lag ain't there and all the other stuff as far as um, transference of the video onto the monitor and you're, and you're making sure that all that stuff is in check and you get the best monitors. Why not ensure the same thing in regards to your connection? Because this is cloud gaming. It's coming all through a connection. So why aren't these people using Cat A cords? I mean, Cat 8 cords are like the fastest retail Ethernet cords that you can get, and they're not that expensive, okay? You can get like a, if you're doing it within a, a, within a network that's a, a, a testing facility, you can, get, you can get a 10 foot cord for maybe like $10, you know, a, a, a viable one, right? But they're not doing that, all right? They're still doing this through Cat 6 for crying out loud, all right? And secondly, 
If you ensure for dedicated devices that the hardware is functioning properly like I speak to prior, then why not test the internet speeds? You know what I'm saying? Before you do these play tests with Stadia. They're not doing that. They may say, oh, well, I know my internet service provider gives me 200 up and 200 down, but why not check the cluster right then and there? They're not doing that. And lastly, if you test the different probabilities with dedicated devices, for example, when, you, when, you, when you're testing the switch, you test it in its optimal phase docked or its least optimal phase when it's undocked. Why aren't you doing the same stability test among the range of uh, internet speeds with Stadia? You know what I'm saying? Like, now, and I'm not just talking about the, the, the selection of within um, Stadia where you change your, uh, you know, how much uh, bandwidth and stuff you want to use. I'm talking about there's internet service providers that allow you to switch that stuff manually. Like, I think Google, as we speak of it, has a service to where you can say, I only want 200 up or 200 down to feed through right now. I only want 50 up and 50 down. Why don't you test that out to give the best scenarios, you know what I'm saying, that you can speak to, to the listening public? And, and, and I can go on and on and on about this, but there's so many things that they're not testing properly as it relates to these uh, cloud gaming platforms. And I'm even hearing in some cases, like with Digital Foundry, they're getting compressed video from other sources. Now, I don't know if those sources are Google or not, but it, it, it shouldn't even matter. You should, if you guys are professionals, have all this stuff at hand to test it yourself. It's, 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 it's really not <laughs> rocket science to figure out, you know, that's something that you guys should do, right? But here's the thing, y'all. People seem to have an agenda when it comes to cloud gaming. Perfect. Perfect. Period. Stadia presents the biggest threat to those that swear by dedicated devices, honestly. Or personally believe that cloud gaming should only be an option for it, right? So they're upset at, at, at Stadia because of that. And these people are letting their personal biases create flawed, misleading play tests and technical results for the unsuspecting public. And how I described earlier, this is a travesty. And it's on, it, it honestly is an embarrassment to their integrity. But you know what? In today's day and age, I guess anything for clicks is okay. <laughs> and that's it from your boy, MM2K. And hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? And stay tuned to this platform as it continues to grow and flourish. We're going to get prominent Stadia gamers and content creators on here as well to give their takes. We're going to expand it to podcasts. We're going to do game streams, all that stuff. But let us know what you think about this and some, some other ideas that you may have. And with that said, thank you for tuning in to this very first episode. And you have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.